Hi, I'm Ben Burkhart with Clear Call Ministries, and I'm here recording in La Vida Hill in New Mexico, on La Vida Hill. And this is near the La Vida Mission. And there are many, many fossils all around in these hills. Um, yesterday I found some shark teeth up on the other, up another ridge nearby, and there's many um, burrows of shrimp that you can find in the rocks, ocean shrimp. And I'm sitting on a rock that is covered with the impressions of clam shells, okay, ocean clam shells. Now keep in mind we're in the middle of New Mexico and this is about 6,000 feet above sea level or altitude right here. So, you know, people might wonder, well, how do all these things get here, right? How do these ocean shells and shark teeth and everything else, how does it get here? on the tops of these mountains where there's not an ocean for hundreds of miles. Well, the Bible tells us that there was a great flood in the days of Noah, and it tells us that all of the life forms were destroyed, except for those on the ark and those who survived in the water. But notice this, this is Genesis 7, and I'm going to read here from verse 15, or actually, let me, let me go forward a little bit there. We'll go to verse 21, Genesis 7, verse 21. And all flesh died that moved upon the earth, both of fowl and of cattle and of beast and of every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth and every man. Okay, because of the sin of mankind, the rebellion of mankind, the Bible says that God had to send a flood to cleanse the earth and he wiped out everything. He destroyed everything. The only ones who survived were those who were on the ark. And a number of the creatures in the sea survived, but also many of them died as the waters were receding. It says here, all in whose nostrils was the breath of life of all that was in the dry land died. And many people look back in geologic history and they ask, you know, what was the great extinction event and how do we see all these animals dying here? You see, the fossil record is a record of death. It's not merely a record of of life, although it records what happened in life, but it is a record of death. And the question is, how did these animals die? How did these creatures die? And they're all buried with sea life and, you know, shark fossils and fish and everything else. It's all buried together when you look at the fossil record. And the Bible tells us that all flesh died in a great flood that covered the entire world. Now listen to this about how the waters receded from the flood. The Bible says in Genesis 8, verse 1, And God remembered Noah and every living thing and all the cattle that was with him in the ark. And God made a wind to pass over the earth, and the waters assuaged. The fountains also of the deep and the windows of heaven were stopped, and the rain from heaven was restrained. God had sent water up from the deep, gushing up great fountains of water, disturbing all of the uh, the sediments and the earth just shooting up. Waters were shooting up from down below and waters were washing from above. Very, very heavy rains for 40 days and 40 nights. Heavy, heavy rains were coming and just washing down uh, the, the mountains and everything. So this is what happened during the flood. But the Bible says that God brought this to an end and a great wind was passing over the earth to dry up the waters. And you can imagine how that was pushing the waters as well and creating this uh, effect where everything is evaporating, the waters are evaporating. <clears throat> it says there in verse 2 of chapter 8, the fountains also of the great deep and the windows of heaven were stopped and the rain from heaven was restrained and the waters returned from off the earth continually and after the end of 150 days the waters were abated and the ark rested in the seventh month on the seventeenth day of the month upon the mountains of Ararat and the waters decreased continually until the tenth month. In the tenth month, on the first day of the month, were the tops of the mountains seen. And you can imagine there were big lakes and seas and you know pools of water all over the earth still. It was just that the tops of the mountains were seen there in the tenth month. And the waters continued decreasing from off of the earth. So you can imagine these waters uh, just rushing off of the earth. And as the waters went, out back out to these great oceans that we have today as the waters went off of the earth then you know many fish and creatures and sharks and everything would be stranded and a lot of the sea life that was under that great ocean in the flood 
would be left in places like this, where we see these shells, these fossils here on the rocks, these clam shells. I'm just sitting on a rock covered in clam shell impressions here, uh, 6,000 feet above sea level, right? So, you know, you would see all of these things, just like the Bible said, and you would see great, you know, bodies of water that remained on the land until perhaps a, a dam of some kind broke and the waters just gushed out uh, to the sea and they would tear, tear out big canyons such as we find in Arizona, the Grand Canyon, um, this uh, process of cavitation where water rushes over the top of something and it just uh, is so turbulent that it, it tears up the ground and it makes big uh, crevices, big formations. And if you have enough water, you'll form a giant canyon like what we see. There's not only Grand Canyon, but many canyons. So here we are in New Mexico, we're looking at all these things and <clears throat> there are many fossil sites around this area and not just here in New Mexico, but if you go into Arizona and many other places around the world and around the United States, we find fossils, fossils in the middle of Texas, giant seashells. Um, these things are everywhere. And so we have to look at the evidence and think about what this really means because everything in the fossil record actually fits the biblical account of the worldwide flood. Everything in the fossil record fits this. And we have to look at the evidence and say, well, the Bible says this is what happened and the evidence is all here. So what are we going to do about that? You know, many people in the world today, they want to come up with different theories, alternate theories, because they recognize that the fossils of the ocean are in the rocks along with many other creatures. They recognize that and they try to come up with different stories because people don't want to come to the, the final conclusion that in fact, there is a God who lives. There is a God who made us. There's a God who holds us accountable for the decisions that we make. And if we choose to live a life of sin, we're going to have to answer for that choice. So not everybody wants to believe that. Not everyone wants to come to that conclusion. But the evidence is all here. The evidence is in the rocks, right? We can see it in the fossil record. And we need to make our decision because the earth tells us, the evidence tells us that God has judged the world in the past, that God sent a great flood exactly like the Bible says happened. God has judged the earth in the past for sin and he's going to judge it again, the Bible says. So I think that we should pay attention to the evidence. We should believe what God has said and believe what the record tells us that in fact there was a worldwide flood that wiped out all of the living creatures from the planet um, with exception of many of the water creatures although many perished because of the turbulent waters and the mud and the debris and everything else but there were still many of those uh, sea creatures who survived obviously in the waters so let's believe and let's trust in God let's trust what the Bible says and let's make sure that we get our lives right with the Lord because the Bible says in 2nd Peter 3 9 that the Lord he is he's not slack concerning his promise but he's long-suffering He's patient with us, and he's not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. He doesn't want us to die. He doesn't want us to perish. He wants us to come to repentance, and God is asking us today to wake up and to give our lives to him, to say, you know, I want to follow God, and I believe God, and I believe his word. I believe the Bible. So what kind of decision will we make in our lives today? What kind of decision do you want to make in your life today? Will you believe what God says in his word and also right here in the rocks, in nature? I hope that we will believe and trust in the Lord and follow his word. Let's give our hearts to Jesus today. Let's not wait. Let's make sure that we get our lives right with God and that we understand the message that God is trying to tell us. So thank you for listening today. I hope you enjoyed this video and I pray that God will bless you. Um, if you haven't subscribed to our channel yet in our community, please do if you'd like to see more videos like this one. And uh, again, God bless you. Uh, share your comments, your feedback. I'd love to hear, you know, what do you think about the fossils and the rocks? And, you know, what are some things that you've seen? Please share in the comments um, down below this video. And uh, may God richly bless you as you seek to know him more and to follow his way. Take care.